there are no lines anywhere on this board. So again, no snipe. It, it's just, it just doesn't exist. So this is my Cutec 2-speed 13-inch spiral cutter head planer. About six months ago, I was having a problem with my previous planer, which was a DeWalt DW734, and I had used that for many years. And all of a sudden, I started getting a, di a different thickness from the left to the right side. So um, the cutter head was slightly angled, and I found it to be a, a real pain to adjust. I tried adjusting it myself. I talked to some people at DeWalt. They have a repair. They had a repair place that would, that I could take it to, and it had been what I thought was a good planer. You know, over time, what I liked about it was the power, but it lacked a lot of features. And so, when it had that problem, since I was already um, in the Dewalt line of, of planers, I did look at the DW735, 735X. Um, I chose the, the Cutec over those models for a couple of reasons. When I had the DW734, I was quite happy with it versus the 735 because there was very little to no difference in the actual cut quality. The advantages were that the DW735 was slightly heavier. It had an extra uh, half an inch cut capacity, which I didn't think was that big of a deal. And it was a two speed planer, which does make a difference, but still, unless you upgrade the cutter head, then the cut quality was about the same. But if I was going to upgrade the cutter head on the, on the DeWalt model, then that would have put me way over the budget that I wanted to go to um, as for a bench top planer. So I decided to go with Cutec. Cutec offers this two speed spiral cutter head planer with carbide inserts for about the same price as the DeWalt model, but with significant upgrades. I just mentioned one that has a spiral cutter head. The spiral cutter head has 26 inserts that are two sided. They're always straight. Um, I've had this model now for about six months. I cut everything from black walnut to purple heart to zebra wood to white oak. Um, I, haven't, I haven't had to change a single one of them. And it's been perfect every single time. It's been a joy to use. Uh, but that spiral cut ahead, the cut quality is significantly better than my DeWalt was. And it is accurate every single time. So that was one, uh, one huge benefit. This is a two-speed model. You can run your stock through at 26 feet per minute and really get it cut down to size and then give it one final pass at 16 feet per minute and have a really nice piece that's almost finished ready. And so I like that feature. This little indent is much better on the cut tech as far as it not providing, not being a lot of resistance for the wood to go through. The way it's made with kind of a, a ball detent, it just pushes right on through and you get an accurate reading without having to really force it through like I did on the DeWalt. You have a snipe minimizer. This is a four lead screw design. So the cutter head is really, really balanced and I shouldn't have to worry about it going out of level, um, you know, like the DeWalt did. Coincidentally, I believe the DeWalt is the same, but it, it, I did have that issue. The frame is all metal, and even though this may be some of the uh, thinner sheet metal on the sides, it's metal, and the DeWalt had uh, was plastic. So I like the way that uh, the handles are made, which I only noticed when I got the machine because the DeWalt had these pull-out handles that really were not comfortable. But the handles on this machine are, are, are really nice. You can go all the way to one eighth of an inch as far as your depth of cut. Um, I usually take shallow passes and I find that to be more than, more than adequate and with the snipe uh, minimizer on this machine I get zero snipe. It's amazing. Um, one of the things that really stood out to me when I got this machine versus the DeWalt was when I put the wood through and the rollers engage. Then this machine responded like a full size floor model machine based on the smoothness, the way that the rollers would grab the wood and feed it through. Um, the DeWalt would almost yank the wood out of my hands and it's just just the way it worked. It's, it's very smooth the way that it runs through. I can't say enough about that as far as the operation of the machine. You would notice it if you got the machine and you've used 
any other any other uh, desktop machine as far as a, a, a planer because I've used a rigid, I've used a port of cable, I've used a DeWalt, um, and a Makita. And they generally will snatch the wood out of your hand and we need to get some strips uh, for a cutting board that were just one eighth of an inch thick. And I didn't have a drum sander, so I used the machine and the strips that I ran were, were from beginning to the end um, accurate. So here's an example. This is a piece of uh, hard maple that I ran through. And what I needed to do was get these down to one eighth of an inch. And then I was going to have to, you know, glue, do a panel glue up side by side so that I can cut them and then turn them up on their end grain. So without a drum sander, that's tough. That's a tough job, or at least takes a while. You know, you're trying to do a, a cutting board. And the machine did it flawlessly. And it, made me really trust uh, the depth stop, the repeat depth stop on this, that if I go down and I put it at one eighth of an inch, I can do that. The DeWalt that I had previously didn't have a, a depth stop at one eighth, of one eighth of an inch. So that was a feature that I was, I was glad to see. So your depth of cut on this machine is a full six inches and your width is 13 inches. Okay, so sorry about the noise, but take a look at that finish. See if I can. I mean, it is smooth. And no snipe. It's nothing. Just a smooth cut. I mean, there is. There are no lines. Uh, see how close I can get this to you that you might be able to. So just kind of you can there are there are no lines anywhere on this board. So again, no snipe. It, it's just it just doesn't exist, especially when you're taking shallow cuts. Um, it's perfectly flat across. How about we test that out and let's see if we can get this at half inch using the depth stop. So. Go ahead and try that feature. And I got it going um, as fast right now. I started fast and then turn it on the slope setting.
to stop for a half an inch. So let's see how good that measurement is. One thing I note, my um, dust collector is underpowered, and so I need to really step that up. I'm using, I believe it's a one and a half horsepower, but I'm on over uh, right around 20 feet of a uh, hose coming to this unit, and it's all the well, right at right at about 20 feet of hose coming to this unit, and it's not a good fit it's just kind of stuck in there so i need to fix all of that and then i, I shouldn't get any of this uh, coming out so all right Let's see what we get half inch let's try it here half inch and that was real time so try not to edit any of that out of there so you can see that but the machine the machine is extremely accurate and I love it just want to show you the roller setup so take a look here um, and you can see these rollers are really really close to the front of the planer so my guess is that has a lot to do with the way that the planer is really engaging the wood so smoothly because there's a good amount of distance between the roller and the actual cutter head. And usually that's the reverse. The, the rollers are just ahead of the cutter head and that means that it engages the wood and then it starts cutting almost immediately. Where here, uh, the rollers are very close to the front of the machine and it's engaging and the wood is already rolling smoothly well ahead of the cutter head. And I think it makes for a much smoother operation and a better cut. So check that on your machine. This is about an inch and a half away from the front and seems to be working very well. Uh, next thing is I want to show you the actual uh, repeat depth of cut indicator and so a mechanism. So this is the unit here. It's really, really solid, one piece construction. And it's in line with the bed, as I mentioned in the video. But you can see why uh, this is so trustworthy. There's nothing to adjust. It's just a solid piece. And you have, I think there are eight adjustments on here. So um, you're going from that, don't quote me on the eight, but you're going from uh, one eighth of an inch all the way up to, so there, there's nine, one and three quarters of an inch. So here on the back side, this is your dust collection port and you can go with a with the two and a half inch or, or, or a four inch port. I'm using a four inch and I do have a dust collector. Um, you have onboard storage for your um, adjustment tools. And then you have two knobs that you can unscrew. They're, they have a rubber top, so they're real, really, really easy to uh, just take apart. And then you can get to the cutter head. I'm just doing that really quick. I'm holding my camera so just be mindful of that and one thing before I turn this off I do want to let you know that one of the features of this um, dust collection piece is if you flip it if you didn't have dust collection and you can just let the chips come out like so um, assuming most of you will have dust collection but if you don't then that's how you do that so right now it's locked and back in place so I'm going to lift this up and then you can see the cutter head so you got 26 of these um, carbide inserts and just gonna roll this around and you can adjust these with the tools that they provided. So far I haven't had to replace a single one of these or turn any of them and I'm cutting some pretty serious wood so that's the cutter head.